Lisa, as part of the commentary team for the T20 World Cup 2024, how do you prepare for each match and what unique perspectives do you aim to bring to the viewers? Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one. Uh, having just kind of been involved in the Indian Premier League, I saw a lot of the players there. Um, but what I tend to do is I have an, an iPad where I keep um, all my notes, um, almost like a score check, like a one-page cheat sheet um, of all of the scores that the players have had or even that team um, in the build-up. Uh, then I kind of pull out the numbers that they of what they've done in T20 cricket recently recent tournaments um and and then the other thing is try to get to know them as a person like have they got an interesting story and the great thing about this ICC T20 World Cup is that it's 20 teams that are taking place and there's some wonderful backstories of how the players will be able you know how they kind of fought through adversity injuries whatever it was to get them to this special place so um you try and bring that um, a lot as well. So the human side of the human element. Perfect. Thanks, Lisa. Question two, how do you assess Australia's performance so far this year? Who do you think has been the standout player for the team? Yeah, it's an interesting one because I guess Australia's focus was um, the 50 over World Cup last year um, and as a team they probably haven't played a lot of T20 games and uh, even the warm-up games um, they uh, they kind of split the arrival of, of players that were still playing in the Indian Premier League so um, they probably Probably haven't had a chance to play a lot of cricket with each other, but in the shortest format. But what we do know is that this Australian side um, really does tend to gel well. There, there's a core group of players that play in all formats and have been playing with each other for over a decade. Um, so they just have a tendency to click. So um, there's a few probably question marks on, on a couple of players, David Warner, Glenn Maxwell. Um, can they kind of turn around um, their lack of form or lack of runs in the Indian Premier League to be able to put on the Australian jersey and and play well in the T20 World Cup. I mean, I have no no real hesitation in saying that. I think they'll they'll both perform really well. It's something about the Australian environment. So um look out because I think Australia will be up there in the top four. Okay. And India is always a strong contender in ICC events. What do you think of their squad this year and who are the key players to watch? India seem to produce star upon star upon star. Um, and, um, you know, they're the type of players and some of their senior players, they're searching for that ICC trophy. And um, especially the T20 World Cup, of having just missed out on the 50 over World Cup. So uh, their chances are good. Their chances are strong. Um, they have a lot of their games. Uh, first game for them starts tomorrow against Ireland. Um, but um, they're playing a lot of their early games in New York and then they go to the West Indies. So from a, a, a pitch point of view, um, conditions, uh, what will they be faced? I think we're still trying to figure out what what that will be like um they've certainly got a great chance simply because they've got some key players uh, rohit sharma virat kohli uh jasper bumrah you know that's just three guys but i'm um, really happy to see that rishabh pant is back in uh so yeah i mean you go through their whole squad and you can pinpoint how that that player might um turn the match for them yeah totally some real star power there um Turning to Australia, how do you evaluate their chances in this tournament and what do you think will be the key players or who do you rather? Well, I think for Australians, you need to make sure that uh, you tune into Prime because they're the ones that have got the exclusive rights to the tournament um, because the, the Australian team will go quite deep in the tournament. So I think there's going to be some sleepless nights uh, or some early mornings that you, you're you not used to turning on the TV and watching cricket. But um, I think everyone will enjoy how Australia play in this tournament. Um, they've had success in the past in the West Indies. Um, and given that they pl they're playing all of their games in the Caribbean, I think uh, their side is good enough to be able to, to stand out. Um, 
yeah, in terms of key players, I think Adam Zampa is certainly one that, um, given that he took a, a break from the IPL, I think he's going to be hungry. I think the conditions will, will suit him. Uh, Travis Head looks uh, a formidable force at the moment. Um, so everyone's saying that he revolutionised uh kind of T20 batting and how he attacked the power play. So um, look out for him. So, um, yeah, Australia will go deep. So it's been some real fine form there. Um, every World Cup has its surprises. Which team do you think could be the dark horse in the tournament? For me, it's one of the co-hosts, uh, West Indies. Um they missed out on the 50 over World Cup. It was the first time they didn't take part in that tournament because they didn't qualify that. That would have stung a little bit. Um, but then you look at what the West Indies do and all of their players are kind of hired around in that T20 landscape and they tend to, to be stars. Um, and given its home conditions, um, home crowd, uh, they certainly get behind their team, I think, uh, West Indies might be um, might be a side that really does upset uh, a lot of teams, and we've got to remember as well that they've won the T Twenty World Cup uh, twice. So um, it, things things seem to be aligning nicely for them um, in the lead up to this tournament. Right, um, and in your opinion, which player has the potential to be to be player of the tournament, and why do you think that? Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing players. Uh, I get a sense that you know if 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 a top order batter really gets going in this tournament, um, they can do a lot of damage. Um, and given that I, I'm kind of pushing West Indies as as a team, an outside chance to to really upset a lot of teams, I, I might go for the player of the tournament, Nicholas Puran. I think um, he's been in. Um, great form, um, you know, he, he's so dynamic. He hits 360. He, he's the type of player that causes a lot of damage um, in that middle overs, which I think will be a question mark for a lot of teams, especially on pitches that assist the bowlers a little bit more. He, he may be the difference. Awesome. And how significant is it for the USA to co-host the T20 World Cup and what impact do you think this will have on the growth of cricket in America? Uh, it's huge. I mean, when you think about the fact that um, cricket is in the Olympics, uh, um, the first Olympics it will be in is LA 28. Um, there's a huge subcontinent population here in the US that love their cricket. Um, you know, we, I guess the the – the kind of the final frontier for cricket is to kind of get the US kind of involved and excited about the game. So um, I think the most important thing is that they first had a, a successful game against Canada. Um, they were able to chase 194 runs um, in a thrilling game. So it was a perfect start for them. But um, it's a real chance to kind of educate people in this part of the world. I'm in New York at the moment. So um, just hearing hearing Americans talk about cricket is, is quite interesting. But, but hopefully the, they'll get on board with the success of their side initially and then subsequent matches and major cricket league that follows this as well. So great. And the format of the T20 World Cup this year is expanded to include more teams. How do you think this has affected the, the competition? Uh, well, I mean, you've got, you've got more, more, more teams, more groups. Um, uh, so I think, I think you may still have a couple of um, blowout games, um, but I think the most important thing is that the T20 format is, is, the global tournament almost the global format um it's the, the op and it's a great opportunity to kind of get new sides coming in i mean the fact that we've got uganda oman oman who's taking on australia as well um so you've got these new sides coming in and i think it as a sport and as a fan of the sport you want to see as many people play it so um I think this is the right move um, and we're only going to see um, it get bigger and better and create more depth within um, the global competitiveness of the global tournaments. Right. And 
Are there any emerging plays that have caught your eye during this World Cup? Well, it's only just started. <laughs> so give me true. a little bit more time. Um, but I think there certainly will be some unearthing of some new stars and um, that's the most exciting thing, uh, that you're going to see players from different countries um, put their hand up in front of, uh, you know, in front of the world audience um, and showcase their skills. And that's, that's, that's the cool thing about what I, what I get to do as well. And lastly, can you share your predictions for the semifinals and finals? Which teams do you see making it to the last stages of the tournament? And are you going to New York? Are you going to be in New York as well for the India-Pakistan match? Yeah, I'm not going to be at the ground or or for the India Pakistan game, um, so uh, I'll be I'll be tuning in just like everyone else in Australia on Prime. Um, but one thing. One thing, um, sorry, what was the question again? Uh, who's Can you the share your predictions for the semifinals yeah. and finals and which teams do you see making it to the last stages of the tournament? Um, okay, so I certainly think Australia, West Indies. Um, New Zealand tend to always be there. They tend to punch above their weight. And uh, I'd, I'll put India as well. So they're my top four. Uh, it's very hard to predict in T20 Get, um, who's going to do well because as we all know um, any any given day one player can have an absolute um, day out and it changes the course of the game the the match and the outcome so um, yeah it is a little bit harder than probably um, 50 over in test cricket and we have time just for one last question um on the IPL, what are your thoughts on the potential appointment of Gautam Gambhir as India's head coach and how do you think this his recent success for KKR will translate to the national team? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of talk. I mean, there was a lot of talk initially about um, Australian pair, Ricky Ponting and Justin Langer being approached. Um, but obviously Gautam and what he's been able to do with KKR. And we've also got to remember the success that he had with uh, Lucknow Super Giants as well. Um, he was able to kind of take a, a new franchise into the finals on both occasions as well. So his, his track record is pretty good. Um, he's shown or he's publicly displayed that he would love to do the job. Um, whether he gets it or not, I guess that's what the powers to be will decide. But um, he's always played his cricket with passion. Um, you can see that that translates um, in his role as mentor or coach as well. So um, no doubt if he gets given the, the chance, he'll be successful. Thanks so much, Lisa.